Hi, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we are going to be building up this rather special uh, TVT92 carbon fibre frame. Um, this one's quite special, it's an ex-team bike, uh, it's another RMO Giton uh, team bike from 1992. Uh, you'll note we did Dante Reze's steel bike uh, a few months ago, uh, but this one here uh, is the carbon fibre TVT92. That year they could opt to have either the steel or the carbon fibre uh, bike in within the team. And this one was Richard Vironks, uh, which is kind of special. Uh, now this was uh, used by Vironks in the 92 Tour, it was his first year's professional with RMO, his first tour, uh, he took a yellow jersey on stage three that year, didn't hold it for very long, uh, but he also um, took second in his first attempt at the polka dot jersey that year as well. As we know, he has a record seven jerseys. A very long to an interesting character, we're gonna come back to in a later video, I think, uh, but for the moment, this is a very cool bike, especially because I want to compare it directly uh, with the uh, the steel team bike uh, of uh, Reze's at some point. Uh, so it'll be fascinating to see how this one rides. Now, um, these were fully Mavic equipped, um, so we are going to be fitting largely Mavic parts on here. Uh, I'll be taking you through that. Um, of note, if you watched the uh, Dante Reze video, you'll know I'm not a big fan of certain parts of uh, Mavic components. Now, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to be using full Mavic brake setup on this one. Um, but because I'm intending to ride this, and in fact, there's a Sportive in a couple of weeks time I'll be riding this on, uh, I will be using uh, a few components of Shimano 7400, uh, namely uh, the uh, the group set um, with the derailleur, front derailleur uh, and gear shifting just because they are really, really good. And if you want a bike that rides well from this period, I'm afraid I think that's what I would heartily recommend. Uh, now, this bike, uh, as you can see here, uh, we've got the, uh, the setup with the seat posted. It's not the correct saddle yet. I'm waiting for that to arrive. I've got the correct Selle Italia Turbo 2 coming in. Uh, but because this is all fresh paint, um, I've had to uh, clamp it on the, on the uh, saddle, not the seat post. Uh, Again, with the seat post here, this is an aluminium 25mm. Uh, these take a straight 25mm seat post. Originally, it would have had a TVT carbon fibre um, item in there. They were rare back in the day, and they simply don't exist. One day, I'll find one and put one on. In the meantime, uh, we've painted up um, an aluminium seat post uh, to take its place uh, for the time being. And a couple of small components we've popped on so far, um, nothing to worry about there. Um, now, when we got this bike, uh, it's worth noting it had to be painted. Reason why it had to be painted, it had already been painted. Um, it had been painted in a very, very thick automotive metallic blue. Um, which then at a later stage, someone had decided to fade in some matte black as well. Um, it was real bad. I mean, like really, really bad. Um, but um, I was going to do a video on stripping that down and painting this frame. But the paint was so thick and it was so challenging because, of course, you can't use paint stripper on uh, carbon fibre tubes. Uh, but likewise, you can't rub down aluminium um, lugs either. So it was just a horrendous experience um, getting this frame, frame ready for paint. Also, uh, of note, it's an off-white uh, pearl um, on the majority of it with black fades as well and an awful lot of decals, um, some specialist bespoke decals made up for us by the great guys over at Velo Cows uh, in the States. Uh, really, really good. Um, couldn't have built this without them, I've got to be honest. Um, but there we go. Um, so parts are ready to go. Um, we're going to go straight in with the forks, I think, because, uh, you know, always makes a bike look better. Now, first thing we need to know uh, about the forks. People always say to me, you know, like, how do you know that really is Veronk's bike? Um, well, sometimes, you know, you get a team bike. Um, I'm not saying mechanics kind of covered up their provenance because they were selling them uh, and didn't really want anyone to know what they were. But this one still had the white paint underneath, so I knew what it was. Um, also, um, on the top lug here, TVT embossed on it. Now, um, of note, with these carbon fibre TVT frames, the vast majority of them, the retail ones, are what we call high resistance frames. Uh, HR, you'll see it on the uh, on the decal often if it says HR, it's high resistance. Um, on the rarer team bikes, um, you've got high modulus. And normally to signify that, and it is only a rule of thumb because there's always the odd exception, um, 
the embossed TBT means you've got a high resistance frame, not a high modulus frame. But, and then sometimes when you're researching a frame, you might get a little mark or a little number, things like that. You get in touch with the manufacturers, you research lots of films, things like that. Not so in this case, because fortunately, uh, Veronk uh, has been uh, stamped in on the uh, uh, bottom bracket, but also, I'll just grab this here, our fork, I'll bring this in close for you. Uh, someone very kindly uh, has at in period written Veronk RMO 92 uh, on the uh, steering tube, uh, which, you know, <laughs> that makes my life much, much easier. Um, so we know this is definitely Veronk's 92 RMO team bike. Um, first year there, he wouldn't have had many of these either. So this is probably his only one. OK, maybe a spare kicking around, but this is probably it. OK, um, now. Uh, we'll go straight in on the um, uh, headset. Uh, now, again, Mavic componentry. Um, so I've already pressed in the upper and lower cups. Lower cup has the uh, um, bearing race already built in, uh, but they pressed in quite easily. Well, when you're pressing these in, um, don't get carried away and think about hammering them. You get the uh, the wind up pressing tools, they're dirt cheap on eBay, get that. They'll press that in nicely, no need to mess around. Really, you shouldn't be using a hammer on any kind of bike. Uh, now, um, I'll go straight into the uh, uh, headset, uh, which we have here on the top. Um, interestingly, uh, with the headset, I'll bring it in close. Uh, Mavic did something quite cool. Um, they uh, they made this, and this is meant to be rubber, but it's kind of failing. Um, but it clamps down and it screws down and then it clamps to tighten up. So there's not a second nut, it's all one piece. It's kind of neat. Uh, I think we'll um, do something with him later, but that should be a, a rubber piece that covers that up. Um, there's also inside there a very nice sealing o-ring as well that stops um, uh, water ingress uh, into your um, uh, bearings, which is a nice, neat little touch. Um, so yeah, Mavic, nice job there. And just pop him straight up in there. I've already greased these, so it should be fairly straightforward. That's just gonna go straight on there. Nice. How's that, a little too tight, I think. Again, too tight. Yeah, that's where I want that. Okay, so we then need just a little Allen key just to uh, tighten that off. Okay, I've got to give that one to Mavic. Um, that was very, very easy to install and set up. That Mavic headset is, uh, yeah, really quite good. Well thought out. Pretty impressed with that. Um, now we're going to go with another Mavic uh, special component, uh, a Mavic bottom bracket. Um, now this is a, an SSC item. I'm going to bring this in close again um, because uh, it's, um, well, it's French, it's special. Um, so. What this one is, um, it took me a little while to figure this out, um, but what they did, um, it's like a cassette, it's fully rebuildable, it's very, very nicely made, uh, but they've threaded the outside uh, of the cartridge, and then uh, your bearing cups are not cups as such, um, they've got uh, a 45 degree angle with a rubber on there, and originally uh, they would have been issued with um, a big routing bit, and what you actually do, <laughs> bear with me here, um, is you kind of route and drill out your bottom bracket very carefully to keep it uh, straight. I'm sure there's a few people with power tools doing this, um, but you, uh, you grind that out so the bearing face uh, is at 45 degrees and this then clamps in there, both sides tighten up with the rubber. That apparently holds it nice and tight. We're going to see how that works out. Again, haven't fitted one of these before. Who knows? Okay, what I can tell you is there's no drive side. Um, the, uh, the square end tapers uh, are both the same each side. I guess the reason for that is 
Uh, because you can tighten up both sides, you can simply move this in and out as required to get your adjustment. Um, so uh, this will go in um, either way. Uh, let's find out. Okay, finger tightened for the moment. Um, I'm just going to try the crank on uh, both sides um, just to check for clearance before I give it a good time. Okay, well that bottom bracket slipped straight on there. It's done up nice and tight. I'm hoping it's tight enough. I could certainly feel the rubbers biting onto that chamfered edge of the bottom bracket. So I think it's actually really quite a nice bottom bracket to play around with. Uh, at the moment, I'm impressed. We'll see whether it falls out when I go out on the shakedown ride. That'll be the, uh, the telling tale. Uh, also, we will be fitting one of these, um, the fantastic uh, Mavic um, Starfish SSC crank. Um, now, the um, reason why I like these, uh, even though it's a Mavic part, they are very, very chunky, uh, very, very solid. There is no flex in one of these things. Um, it's very over-engineered. Mavic basically did this because they wanted to get the, uh, the bolts around the other side and have a flush finish on the face. Um, but they are really, really good cranks. Um, we got this one here, I think 52, 42 uh, on the chain rings, uh, which is just what I wanted for this bike. So we'll go ahead and pop this straight on. Okay, that's really easy to fit. There's no doubt about that. That's really smooth, really nice. There's no play in that. Oh, this is gonna be good to ride. I like that a lot. So brakes next. We'll be using these Mavic SSC brakes on the Veronk bike. Um, now, if you watch the Reze uh, video, uh, you'll know that on that RMO Giton, I took these off. Uh, reason being they are incredibly difficult to set up uh, and incredibly difficult to keep set up um, and I'm going to risk it on these. I've got a feeling I, I know what I'm doing a lot better with these now. Also, I sprung a lot of money for an almost new set. I think that's what these things come down to. When they were new, they were probably OK. Um, it's just 30 years down the line that they are not OK. Uh, the reason why these are uh, interesting, um, once again, French always think outside the box. Um, whereas everyone else puts the uh, the return spring on the outside, uh, Mavic hit it away on the inside. Um, so it, it's very hard to adjust. Uh, when you do start to adjust it, things go very, very wrong very quickly. Um, so I'm not going to attempt to adjust those. I'm just gonna bolt these up and uh, see how they go. So brakes front and back are fitted. I had to just clear out a little bit of uh, fresh paint uh, from inside the, uh, the mounting holes there which I've done very, very gingerly, um, but they're on and out. I haven't tightened them up um, because I may need to just play with them a little bit uh, to, for the adjustment, which I'm going to do manually off the nut uh, rather than on the brake system itself. Uh, but uh, next thing we do, we're just going to pop on uh, the uh, shifters, I think. OK, so we'll be using these Shimano 7400 uh, series 8-speed shifters. Uh, really, really good 
um, index shifters without a doubt. Uh, when you're fitting these, same as on a, a Vitus frame on these TVTs, you need the flak back uh, main cup. Um, there's a difference, one's curved to hug the frame, the other one on these type are flat because uh, that's the way it's been machined. Uh, they just pop on, uh, you've got a little lug on the uh, top part, make sure it's facing upwards and then that should just go on Pop on there. Then, oh, that's why I like using these shifters. Um, originally, the Mavic ones, as discussed uh, in the Reze video, uh, they're a, a rebranded um, Simplex Retro Friction Lever. <laughs> they're rubbish. This is excellent. Same period. Same style, same type, still a down tube shifter, but these work really well, and the simplex ones are just 10 years history. Okay, that's the front derailleur roughly in position. We're using the Dura A7400 series uh, for the uh, derailleurs on this build because it's built to ride, uh, not just hang up. I'm not tightening that down yet. Um, I think I've got it roughly in the right place, but obviously I'm gonna wait until I've got the chain on there um, until I finally tighten that down. Fresh paint, get it right the first time, um, you know, uh, because uh, you don't wanna see all your work um, kind of chip away. Rear derailleur's on there as well, another Dura A7400. Um, really high quality item, rate those a lot. Um, Dropouts on these, um, they are proprietary TVT made uh, dropouts front and back. Um, so uh, yeah, um, they are uh, pretty much what they are. So it's probably about time we uh, look at getting the handlebars on there um, before we get the, uh, the line sorted out. Um, we've got original Mavic SSC uh, brakes on here. Um, the uh, the levers and hoods, they're really, really nice. I like how they work a lot. Um, I think they're rebranded Modolos. You get this a lot with Mavic parts. They just kind of uh, rebrand other people's good stuff. Um, bar and stem, you've got a, a Cinelli um, 40 centimeter detalier uh, bar there uh, and a 120, or it might even be 130 actually, yeah, it's 130, 130 mil um, Cinelli uh, stem. Obviously uh, being a, a pro team bike, um, it's a little small for me. Always these frames were a little small. You make up for it with a nice long reach stem. Yep, they're roughly in place. Again, I'm not going to tighten up uh, any of this until I, I'm finally certain of all the positionings, uh, but we'll come back onto that at the end. But that's roughly uh, in place, and I'm pretty happy with how this is all looking at the moment. So wheels we're going to be using on uh, this build are going to be some Mavic CXP30s. Uh, really, really nice. Should work very well on this bike. Very period as well. Uh, Shimano hubs um, with a Shimano um, Hyperglide. Um, I think that's 11 to 28 cassettes. So very, very useful. Um, I've got a Hilly Sportive coming up uh, on this bike. So that will be perfect for that. Also, we've got some lovely fresh VeloFlex 25 mil tubulars on there. Um, again, I know that's going to keep this planted on the road and ride So really, wheels are really on well. there. Surprisingly tight on the clearance. You certainly couldn't get any bigger uh, than uh, 25 mil on this frame. Um, but we're going to go on now uh, to our chain. Nice new Shimano uh, 8 speed chain um, we're going to size it by going from the big cog to the big cog and then plus two links and then cut it there um, we are using a quick link uh, assembly as well so it's actually about one and a half uh, links on top Okay, one thing I do like to do, once I've got the uh, the cables all run, when I clip them, not a big fan of uh, cable ends. I much prefer a little bit of Loctite or super glue, just on the cut end there, just a little bit. We'll uh, and then just wipe that off my fingers. Um, what that does, it'll stop it from fraying, but if I want to take it out again at any time, I can do, um, and you can get it in and out of your cable runs absolutely fine. You've got a few goes before it starts to fray. Whereas of course, if you've chopped it, chances are it's a one time only if you're using those cable crimps. Um, now I think we'll pop some pedals on. Uh, we're just gonna use uh, regular Shimano SBD pedals on this one. Um, 
they were around obviously since 86 on the clipless pedals so uh, nothing to worry about there which is great because you know um, they fit on everything okay i'm just down here at the uh, pedals i popped on these uh, regular shimano spd pedals they're great they do the job nicely they're silver um, so we like those a lot um, of note uh, drive side uh, here uh, the thread on the crank was just a little bit damaged uh, going in um, I would imagine someone's tried to fit um, maybe a, a French threaded pedal in there at some point, uh, but they definitely done a little bit of damage at the start of the thread. Now, what I did, instead of trying to just force it through, I didn't have the right tap. So what I did, took the pedal, put it in from the other side, um, put it all the way through, and that just cleared out that thread, got rid of any of the damage, and then I was able to just come in nicely from the correct side, and it's done up nice. There's no long-term damage or anything like that, but anything you get like that, always try and think around the problem rather than just forcing it straight through. Okay, so uh, that's the brake set up front and back. Um, they were tricky as expected, uh, especially the back took quite a bit of adjustment setting. Um, I think it just goes with Mavic brakes. They test your patience um, every time, but they seem to be uh, working okay, at least on the stand. Uh, final thing I'm gonna do while it's up here uh, is just finishing off uh, taping these bars. Uh, one thing I do like to do before I put the tape on, just on the, uh, the trailing edge of the drop bar, I like to put a little bit of excess tub tape, uh, basically double, so very strong double-sided tape, uh, just on the top uh, of the uh, drop, um, just stops uh, any chance of the uh, the tape unraveling, especially if you're down low uh, and you're trying to uh, give it some pressure, it can unravel, I've often found that. So I find a bit of that, deals with that, no problem at all. Okay, so that's Richard Vuong's 1992 Giton RMO team bike back together and ready to go. I've got a few little things that I need to do uh, before the shakedown run, and I'm going to go through and double check all of the nuts and bolts, make sure everything's up nice and tight. I'll sort my stack and reach, which basically is a measurement from just back from the nose of the saddle. I like to be 78 centimeters up from the center of the bottom bracket and 78 centimeters uh, from the uh, reach of the um, hoods there. 78, 78 puts me in the ballpark of what I know will fit. There's bound to be a couple of other adjustments on this bike as well. Um, some little tweaking to the indexing the brakes i have no doubt will need some adjustment but other than that she is ready to go for my shakedown ride uh, and then the first of hopefully many uh, classic vintage rides um, if you enjoyed this build video do like and subscribe uh, for more what vintage bikes building riding anything that's cool to do with vintage bikes you'll find it here thanks a lot